Welcome to Think Woodworks. I'm Izzy Swan and today we're going to build track blocks. Well, let me tell you, I've been using track pad now here for the last couple of weeks and track pad is a material that's new to me. Until a few months ago, I didn't even know it existed. So I'm really happy to be using it now and I'm getting a lot of use out of it. I even put it on the bottom of my router compass and it does a great job of keeping it right where it's supposed to be. And it occurs to me there's a lot of stuff out there on the market that even experienced woodworkers may not know exists. So while I go through and build these, I'm going to share with you some of the tools that I now use every day, all the time. So when you get trackpad, it comes in a box like this. And now in each box, there's eight pieces of trackpad, and there's four of these little guys. Can you see that? It's like a double-ended nail. Well, what it's for is so you can stick it in the block like this. Then you can set a work piece up there finish it and turn it over and finish the other side. Now while this video is going to be a little bit longer than my normal one, I guarantee you there's going to be some tools in this that you most likely don't even know exist. But the focus of today is going to be on the trackpad. Trackpad is great for all kinds of things where you don't want a piece to slip around, so there's lots and lots of uses for it. I wonder what else you can make with it. Hmm. Well, let's get started. Okay, starting at the table saw, I need to rip down some plywood to 2 and 3 eighths by 2 and 3 eighths. Now, at the table saw, you'll, what you see here is things I always have here now. They don't ever leave the table saw. And this is a machinist quality square right here. And it's got a little edge on it so it can actually be put on there on the side of a piece and you can get a perfect 90 degree mark on it. But what's really cool about this is it has two magnets on the bottom. So if you have a table saw like mine, this is the Delta, it's the um, contractor series, so it's not, the positive stops on this are not real accurate. I don't trust them. So if I need an absolute perfect 90 degree angle, I'll slide my fence, this up to my fence. The magnets hold it right down where it needs to be, so I don't have to worry about holding it. And then I can adjust, just adjust my blade to match that 90 degree angle. And this is something I use constantly here at the table saw, so it stays right there. Now if I need to make changes and, um, you know, if I need to cut at an angle, I'll use my mini digital protractor. I'll just stick that on after I've 90 it out, zero it out, and then I can change it to whatever angle I need it to be. And that's how I get very accurate angled cuts with a less than expensive saw. And the other thing that's always here is the 11th finger. Now, normally I use a push shoe. You guys have seen, if you've seen one of my videos, normally I use a push shoe, and I, I still do. Um, I happen to be out of them right now. I think I tossed my last one because it was worn out here. I got to make some more. But um, this thing always stays here because even with the push shoe, occasionally you need a, a second pair of hands on that piece of wood. And this 11th finger has magnets on the bottom. It just sticks right down, which is really cool because if you're anything like me, I start stacking my cuts on this side of the, of the fence or whenever I've got a lot of cuts that I'm doing. And if you've got a, a push stick, it can get buried in there. It's hard to find. With that sticking up all the time, straight in the air, it's always within reach. It's always very visible, and it's always easy to get to. So let's make these cuts. Now, I haven't built a table saw sled for this table saw yet, and this right here is 2 and 3 eighths, and I would not... That is just not a cut I would be willing to make on a table saw, even with a push shoe or a push stick. It's just that's asking for a kickback. So let's head over to the chop box. So now on my chop saw, I've been using the Fast Caps chop saw saw hood, and that catches all the dust that's going behind there. This does have a pretty good sized footprint, and you need some space between that and the wall, which works out for me because then I have plywood storage and cart storage behind it. But I'm not going to get into this today. This whole system is from Fast Cap, and I'm going to do one complete video on this system when I have an outdoor project coming up. So, but there are a couple things I'd like to show you here. This yellow strip right here is called zero clearance tape and it's for your chop box and when you use it here it does a really neat thing. Now when you're using a regular blade it's really likely that you're going to get tear out along the bottom like this right here all the time. Now with this, no tear out. So this is a zero clearance tape and this is what it looks like. When you get it, it comes with a speed tape on the back, and you can just pull the tape off, feed it in there, and plop it down. Now, I've gone a step further with mine. I've taken off my, my original guard here and actually just sanded down the base of this a little bit, so when I attach it, this is almost level. It's not quite perfect yet. I still have to tweak it, 
this is level with the bed here so I don't end up with a variance, which doesn't really matter on larger pieces. If you've got a piece that's 12 inches or longer, that little lift is not gonna make enough of a difference to matter. But if you're doing really short pieces, you know, which I do often, it can pull that edge up a little bit and bring your thing off, bring your uh, cut off. So um, just, you can either sand those little nubs down so your, your inset goes down a little further, or you can add some more speed tape to, you know, to your fence or to your thing. And then this, you know, so you don't have that problem, just add a couple extra pieces of speed tape there. But, but what I like even better about this zero clearance tape is, I oftentimes bring my material over here if I'm using stuff from the big box store to square up an end. And I, what will happen is because that ga the gap on this original fence is pretty wide, those little tiny cutoffs can fall down in there and they get build up. So with this zero clearance tape, that never happens. That alone is worth it to me just to have that convenience there so I'm not left trying to dig small pieces of wood out from in underneath here, underneath that fence. So anybody that's used the chop box for any length of time knows that when you're using a stop block, you put the piece up there and you hold the piece on the side that the stop block is on. You do not want to hold this on the opposite side because that piece that you cut off can get skewed, get caught between the stop block and the blade, build up pressure and go flying off of there. Now this is obviously way too close to have your fingers next to, and this is where the next product comes on. This is called a $10 million finger, and I wish I would have thought of this. It's simple, elegant, and perfect. It's got trackpad on these two little fingers here and on the back as well. So you can take this thing, you can stick it on here and put some down pressure on it, and you never have to get your fingers anywhere near the blade. This is uh, one of those things that will always be right next to my chop box forevermore. And this is a really cool product that's new to the market. So you can really get in there with confidence, get a good secure hold on that. So anytime you got a small piece in there, this is the way to go. The next thing I need to do with this build is to drill a hole in the top and in on the side, which brings me to this, the KISS drill bit system. This is probably my in the top three of my favorite products from Fast Cap. And what I love about this is it makes it easy to find. Like if you're anything like me, old timer, eyes are failing, hard to you know see, and you end up with the micrometers every time trying to figure out your drill bit size. This lays it all out for you. You've got your eighth quarters, you've got your 64s, 30 seconds, 64 sixteenths, all the way down the board, and everything's got marks with the colors on the tops and these colors here so they're easy to go back you don't have to spend any time so I need a 3 8 um, drill bit so that I just grab that right there and I also need an 11 64 so I'll just grab those two right there it's that easy and when I'm done I know exactly where they go back quick and easy that saves a buttload of time in the shop This next tool is another one of my favorite. It's a power mag for a drill. You just attach it to your drill. When you're using it, you can throw your screws on the magnet and it holds them in place, not rolling all over your work surface. And when you're not using it, you can use them to organize your drills. I just attached a metal bracket to the top of my cabinet there, and now I can hang all my drills in one place. Now with my blocks all milled and holes all drilled, I took a mini power head screw and put it into a magnet I got at Home Depot. These have holes in the middle of them. It's just a small neodyme and drilled it into the hole that was in the side. I did that on all the blocks and then attached the track pad both to the top and bottom of it. Now those magnets hold those little double-sided nails in and I never have to worry about losing them. 
So there you go, track blocks with a neat little way to store those pins so they never get lost. Everything I mentioned in today's video, I'll put links in the description box below. And let me know what you thought of this video. If there's some kind of tool out there that maybe a lot of people don't know about, leave it in the comments section below so we can check it out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.